Hello, this is Ralph Weiser with Airson USA Corporation. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to read a positive displacement blower flow curve. Two main topics are reading a flow diagram, because it can be very confusing, and uh, how you could use the diagram for troubleshooting purposes. Now, the beauty of a positive displacement blower is the linear function between speed and flow. This is due to the fact that the positive displacement machine, as the name pretty much already spells it out, it positively locks the air inside the housing and the rotors, between the rotors, and the moment that you turn the drive shaft, it turns out or spins out air. Now, one key thing is this is based on inlet flow in inlet conditions, which means this machine is not all that susceptible to a difference in relative uh, humidity or pressure variances. As you can see here, each line represented of, of, of a certain pressure rating, a pressure rise. You know, when you see the point here from between 15 and 4 psi, there is not an awful lot of a variance in flow, which is unique to the positive displacement machine. A dynamic machine, a centrifugal type machine, would have a great, much greater variance at if you kept the speed the same and the pressure would rise by that much. Now, how you would use it is, first of all, you need to know that the curves are uh, based on uh, certain standard conditions. They are here 68 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature and 14.7 psa inlet pressure which is roughly at sea level. I'll get back to that later as to what that means to my uh, temperature and especially discharge temperature requirements. So now how would you start how would you start in ascertaining like what unit to use here we're assuming we need a 800 C ICFM type blower at roughly 10 PSI PSIG that is PSI gauge pressure and once again emphasis lies on making sure that my units of measure are correct here it's inlet CFM inlet conditions as it goes into the machine it's different when you call out uh, ACFM or SCFM. Those are uh, then converted, they can be converted to ICFM, but just absolutely make sure that you keep your units of measure correct and in tune. Once you know what flow you want, you draw a straight line over straight to the pressure rise of 10 psi in this particular case. If it was any different, well, pick any of these pressure curves based on this agenda here. Mark the spot where this line and the line of my 10 PSI line cross, and then draw a vertical line all the way down to the RPM. And here you have roughly 45, 50 RPM with this particular machine. Now. That works in reverse. If you know what model number unit you have and you know what pressure you have and you know what the speed is, you can draw the same line the other way and say, let's say you have a 4000 RPM machine here at 15 PSI, you could draw this line over here and you would roughly uh, have like 600 and um, like maybe 60 or 70, something like that in in uh, ICFM. Now that you know what your RPM is, you can go to the part of a diagram that will surely list what my temperature rise is and my expected brake horsepower at the drive shaft. Following what I get from the other sh sheet, I draw the same vertical line through my 4550 RPM um, vertical line and here I draw a horizontal line over at the temperature come based on the the uh, this line here which you can see down here is 10 psi so my horizontal line is about 180 
So my temperature rise plus my ambient is approximately the air discharge temperature that I have. Very important. And this is where my uh, ambient temperature makes a huge difference. So at 68 I might have this, but if I have 100 degrees it is a lot more. It's like uh, 32 uh, degrees hotter than that. Also you might notice that the slower I turn my machine the more heat I get out of the machine. That is simply due to the fact that the clearance within that machine do not change, the speed does. So in essence what you do is the, the hot compressed air has no more time to go through the same clearance gap and thereby recycling hot air within the machine and doing so drops the overall volumetric efficiency and my temperature also goes up. So machines that you run slower don't run any better in, in terms of temperature, they run worse, which is an, an, a frequent misconception about these machines. Now once I know temperature I also would like to know what my brake horsepower requirement is. Same principle as before, you mark the the spot where the vertical line and my pressure line are converging, you draw a horizontal line and over here you now know what your brake horsepower consumption is. Now this was hopefully fairly easy. The um, flow over RPM we covered. Once you have a few parameters you can find out the missing spots really quickly because this is, uh, and I'm gonna go back here one more time, if you knew what what RPM you have, you draw the vertical line and then just let it meet with whatever pressure pressure you might have at the discharge side of the, my machine. You could then extrapolate what the brake horsepower is and also where my temperatures are. And if you know this, then you also will be able to uh, extrapolate what flow you would have at these conditions. Troubleshooting is therefore easy because once you have the units of measure correct, you have a flow curve off of that machine and you have a couple of key parameters, you can then finally figure out what in the world is going on with the machine. Is it too slow? Is it too fast? Uh, what other things could be happening if, if the clearances go up? So does the temperature and the flow drops. But the, um, the again, the key is once you can put a couple of these lights on your on your piece of paper off that flow curve, you can then extrapolate what you can expect. Measurement then is the key in the accuracy of that measurement. So that in all is, is very quickly what you can do and how you need to do uh, flow calculations on blower curves. If you have any questions or comments, drop me a mail at rwiser at Thank you so much and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.